Here we have it, check this big boy out. So you may remember the first ever YouTube video I recorded was um, about that little single seater golf cart. So the plan was gonna be for that golf cart, but we managed to track down a double seater, so we got rid of the single seater recently. And we've had this one sitting around for about a year or so now. So the plans for this is gonna be pretty cool. This will probably be the coolest thing I've ever built, even years to come. I don't think anything's gonna to top this. So we're putting a V-Rod motor in it, and it's also gonna be turbo. So we've got a GDX Garrett turbo going on it. Um, RX-8 diff in the back, it'll be air ride front and rear. I've obviously got to do a, some help with some disc brakes on the front, so I might try and get some off a quad or anything. The reason why I want disc brakes on the front is so we can do burnouts in it. Um, yeah, I'm not going to make it, it's not going to be a high speed thing, you know. I've, yeah, I've ridden golf carts with proper petrol, like bike motors in there, and they're just too fast that these things just don't want to handle whatsoever. So, I don't know, I'll probably, it'll probably be geared to maybe 150 ish. Whether you get to there will be a different story, but like I say, we're not here to, it's not here for speed, and I thought if I gear it down quite low then you better you pluck some gears doing skids so it should be pretty fun so the motor's obviously going to sit in the back here somehow might see if we can mount it this way it all just depends with the chain drive and stuff so yeah that's right so it's going to be rx8 diff and a chain drive and that's we'll get it all to work like that motor in the back and uh, what else have we got so it'd be like turbo smart wastegate all that type of stuff all the common branded gear you'll we use on a car is all going on this little fella. And I've basically got every single part. We've even got mag wheels for it, some real cool deep concave wheels going on it. Um, yeah, so first thing we need to do is just whack the roof off it because as you can see, there's not much room clear, um, head clearance to raise it up on the hoist. So once we pull that roof completely off, jack it up and see if we can remove this back body section over here. And yeah, start making a solid plan how we're gonna do it. So originally I thought this you could pull this whole body off like a ute and there's going to be a bare chassis and I was going to make a whole new space frame chassis. Start again, it would have been so much easier than trying to work around this um, chassis that's in here because it's real rusty at the moment. Like, this thing has so much rust on it. Like, oh, you can't really tell now because it's all wet, but yeah, we'll soon see once we get up on the hoist, but it's real rusty everywhere. So it would have been really nice to have, to make a whole space frame and just dump this body back on top, but I don't think it's going to work like that. Real cool cart by the way, so have a look inside. <laughs> it's got all the um, got cup holders, it's, it's, it's a fully complete cart which is real hard to find, like everything is there, it's complete. So all in all, it's going to be a really fun project. Got a feeling now, this here, it's going to get put on hold because this is not going to take as long as I thought. So as you can see we whacked the roof off it, that upper support there was so rusty it ended up snapping off. So what we're going to end up doing is, I'm probably going to do some roll bars across both seats just for a bit of safety aspect and we might do some side intrusion bars as well that can open and close. That's not a given, it's just a thought for the now, I said I haven't put too much thought onto it because this is the first day even working on the thing. So just like the RX2, plans will evolve, plans will change and come up with different ideas but just quickly thinking now that's sort of where I'm sitting. We might do a removable roof and have it a lot lower and but we'll definitely be putting a screen back on it somehow. So. Anyone who lowers things, this is an absolute dream. Have a look how big that rear sea notch is. Like, I had no idea that it looked like that underneath. Look how solid the chassis rails are. Real strong. Um, no rust on them. It's all this stuff like this where the water was trapped in the areas that's gone all rusty. So, basically in short, there's going to be absolutely no chassis work to be done. I don't need to remove the floor. I don't need to remove any of that section anymore because we don't need to build a chassis. I'm super happy with that. So what's going to happen in the rear, we're going to do a fall link to remove the leaves obviously. We're going to do a solid axle but we're going to run an LSD unit in the middle. We're going to convert that to chain. So it'll be a chain drive LSD unit. The reason why I want to go LSD on it is because it's going to be quite a heavy thing and there's no reverse on it. So if you're by yourself you're trying to push it backwards with a lock diff it could be quite awkward in tight situations. So I sort of thinking ahead and think we'll go with the LSD unit. And what else are we going to do? So I'll be running a... We'll run a disc on the rear axle as well, so we'll do a rear brake as well because currently it's got those ugly drums but you see we won't be using this setup at all. So four link, disc brake, RX-8 diff, that's basically it. And then you mount the motor which is going to be the easiest part of the whole build. So the part that's going to be not challenging, that will have a bit of a, will require a bit of work will be trying to adapt some brakes. As you can see there's no brakes on here and trying to slam this front out. So apart from that, that's going to be the plan and you might see, start seeing a few updates every odd week on this little thing. Should be one cool project. And here look all the weight we've, we've removed. It's probably over 100 kgs there alone. None of that's going back on the car. So if you want any of this, just let us know. Before it goes to the skip, the wheels will be coming off, so they'll be in the bin as well, as well as the diff, the shocks, same as the front and back. So 
If you, any of you guys want any of these parts, come grab them before I throw them out. One of the new parts we've brought for the golf cart so far. As you can see, we've got our Elite Heltec 1500. I'm not too sure what fuel regulator I'm going to use. It depends how we're going to do this fuel setup. But I've brought this one anyway. It's a little rising rate turbo smart one. So we can either use that or I've got a little V-Dub one somewhere in here. That's a rising rate as well and it fits into the factory V-Rod fuel rail. I'll create a fuel pump for it. Got our injectors that fit in the factory V-Rod fuel rail as well. Yet again, I've created a map sensor that goes in the factory V-Rod block. So yeah, basically got everything there. Here's our turbo, it's a little Garrett GDX28 with a little V-band rear. And what else is in here? Basically all the fittings we need. Got our wiring loom. Um, I'm not too sure if we're gonna use this loom or we're gonna use the factory V-Rod loom. We'll soon see when we cross that path. But I've also brought some spare plugs in case we end up just using the factory V-Rod loom, which probably will run that way, but I brought a loom anyway. Um, we've got all of our uh, fuel fittings, all those bits and pieces, sort of what I thought we'd need. I'll we'll probably obviously need a few extra bits and pieces. Fuel lines, and this is gonna be possibly for our radiator, all of our dash fittings and the bigger hose. So yeah, this should all work out. There's still other bits scattered around here. We've got like an oil cooler core, radiator core if we end up making custom one-off ones, but yeah, that's basically all the parts there. So I thought I'd quickly touch base before I end this video on why we didn't end up going with a single seater. Reason being is the motor where it was going to sit on the other one it was going to take up too much real estate and I had a massive bulge in the middle there. So and it would have been quite uncomfortable to drive. So that's why I thought I might as well go for a, tw a twin seater. That way you can carry more people, it will look more better and it'll be more comfortable. So And the way this is, you can actually sit the motor a little bit further back so you might only have a bulge halfway up in the seat and then we can incorporate it into some cup holders instead of literally taking up the whole seat and it was actually going to come out the front here as well on the single seater so that's the reason why we went for the double seater plus it's just going to be a way better looking uh, car too